Welcome in, welcome in. Mimi Graves, God bless you, welcome in. Jason Roll, God bless you. Welcome in, hallelujah. God bless you. <laughs> How you doing, Lenny? All is well? Amen. First Lady Marcy is on. Welcome in, guys. Hallelujah. The sun is on as well. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. Sharice Bean is on. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God bless you. Nicole Thompson is in the house. We are delighted to have you on. Thank you, Jesus. And we are so happy and excited. We um, we love this offering we're giving. We're giving something called a care package. Um, it's a actually is a healing package, and this is something that we're doing here. As you can see, this is full of goodies. It's full of goodies. <laughs> As you can see, it's full of just everything you need for. Uh, healing, deliverance, as well as communion. There we go. Then we have one, if you're dealing with jobs, it's called Jobs and Critters. It's a package. It's a combo, and it's very good, and we love it. Amen? You see Bradley Bain is in the house as well. Good afternoon to everyone. And today, hallelujah, we're going to be uh, we're gonna be doing something a little different today. Amen? We're going to be doing some praying today. Amen. We're going to do some praying today. So we're going to do a little short teaching. And then we're going to go into some prayers today. Because we, I've been getting so much messages and emails about people who are going through evil attacks in their dreams. Okay. Evil attacks in their dreams. And we want to concentrate on that uh, today. Just do something a little different. Because um, the enemy knows that 90% of the time when we sleep and we are open... We're open, so to speak, and and he knows this very well, having studied us, studied us for so long, that he comes into dreams, and though most of your warfare, 90% of your warfare is going to start in the dream, okay? Scripture says, when my, when my wise men slept, the enemy came in and sowed uh, tears among the wheat and went his way, amen? Wild men slept, and so... This is what we want to pray on today. Amen. Some people, they uh, they go to bed feeling very fine, wake up sick. Some of them go to bed feeling very good, healthy, and they wake up and they don't want to save God no more. Some of them go to bed, wake up and find out that their business has been shot. They go to bed, wake up, and didn't know what was happening at the night season. And they find out that their business is now, you know, it's not going as good as it should, or things are happening in the business that shouldn't happen. And they find out that they're losing their business. They find out that their business is not thriving anymore. They're barely making ends meet when, when once they were thriving. Amen? And this is what the enemy has been trying to do for the longest time, is to shut down the people of God through the dream avenue. His main objective is to kill, to steal, and destroy. Many people, they don't recognize that there's something called night raiders. Do you know there's something called night raiders? These are night raiders or night crawlers, I call them. And their destiny and their job is to literally steal your vision, steal your dream, and then pollute you uh, to the point where, you know, you cannot seem to make it. And that's what it is. I hope you and Kia are doing great. Yes, yes, thank you, Lenny. <laughs> thank you so much. Yes, we are. You got to definitely catch up, woman of God. Definitely got to catch up. Hallelujah. The thing about it is they try to even bring demotion. Have you ever felt when you woke up like something was stolen from you? But you cannot figure what it is. You, you notice something was off. It, it seemed fuzzy. But you can't remember what's happening. Oh, hey. Oh, my God. Arlene, man. We, wow. So good to hear from you, Arlene. Wow, man. It's so good to hear from you. We was just... Saying, you know, we haven't seen you for a minute. Praise God. Good to see you, woman of God. Always a pleasure. It's one of our solid people, you know. We met from the conference we had in um, Florida and always been, you know, one of our 
dearest friends, you know, really, really good person. And I know that God is doing some tremendous things in her life. Amen? Yes, yes, we do. We love you too as well. <laughs> we sure do. Hallelujah. And so I want to just uh, discuss what, is, what it means. And I'm going to read some scriptures. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men and slumbering upon the bed, then he opened it, the ears of men, and sealed their instruction. Right, this is in Job. Also, it tells us, Be not as the horse or the mule, which have no understanding, whose mouth must be held in with a bit, with a bit of the bridle, least they come undone. All right? Scripture is telling us right now that we need to pay attention. In other words, don't be stubborn like a mule or a horse. All right? Because these things come to steal, to kill, and destroy. And the reason why they're doing that is because they recognize that there is a lot of things happening. There's a lot of spiritual increase in the atmosphere concerning dreams. And the enemy has been releasing these things into our life at a very terrible speed. Amen? Dreams of demotion, dreams of, of backwardness, dreams of stagnation. All right? You got people who are assigned to that. They got a region that is right here in the world. And they have a region everywhere on the planet called the region of darkness. All right? Or the habitation of cruelty that they talk about in Nahum. Nahum speaks about this. And these invisible powers, they have one thing to do. They work with the night. They work with the night season. They work with the night season. They are of the night. They are of the night. And many people know about this who are in the realms of the occult or who are in cults or who are into deep darkness. They know about the night season. They know that most of their raids are carried out at night. And God is saying in the season, I want you guys to literally pay attention to your dreams. Pay attention to what's happening around you. Pay attention. Okay. There's this gentleman who uh, went to sleep one night. And all of a sudden, someone stepped into his, <laughs> they stepped into his house in the dream. In the dream, they stepped into his house. And then before you know it, he couldn't move. And then he saw that they brought a coffin in. <laughs> and he watching them in this dream. Now, he watching them in the dream. And they brought the coffin into him. And he trying to tell them, what you doing, what you doing? They said, shut up. All right. Then when he looked again, he was in the coffin. When he looked again, he was burying and very shortly thereafter, because he didn't believe in this stuff and he didn't want to take action, but he related the dream to some people. And I think very, very shortly after that, he had all kinds of complications in his body, all kinds of sickness, and eventually passed away. See, you can't play with these things. Amen? That was someone who wanted to do him right in. And the person tell him, shut up. And he said, who are you? Let me go. And they tell him, shut up. All right? Be quiet. And see, if he, was, if he was aware of what was happening in the realms, he would know that he was under a spiritual embargo and that was a coffin spirit. It was a dead spirit. And then so he was paralyzed with fear. Right? They paralyzed him and said, shut up. And they proceeded to put him, whilst he's paralyzed, in the coffin. Amen? And then they buried him in the coffin. So what they were doing is they were destroying everything around him systematically, systemically, and they were breaking him down with that type of dream. And eventually, he did succumb because there are a lot of people who stay in and I don't believe in it. If I don't believe in it, it doesn't have no power over me. It can't, can't touch me. All right? This is a lie from the pit of hell. You need to find out what's going on. You need to be aware and you need to be able to fight. Amen? But you need to fight with the tools of God. In every battle, there is a victor and there's a victim. Do not be the victim in the season. Amen. Do not be the victim in the season. And we're going to talk about this, all right? Because these night raiders and these night skeletons, these skeleton lords that are coming against you, they have one thing and one thing and one thing only to desire. That is to ruin you, to ruin your relationship, to ruin your marriage, to ruin your, your blessings, to steal your house, to steal everything. These are what I call deep dream attacks. And I'm saying this to tell you that the lady who we prayed for, the first lady they prayed for, who sent me the the uh, the message? Well, after we prayed for her, she came there on Tuesday and told me last week. Told she said, "Really, no prophet I had a dream. I, I was telling you how they was trying to stop my son from getting in school, 
and they was trying to stop my son from uh, getting the scholarship. Uh, you know, and the fat lady was keep saying, you know, your son needs to, your son needs to go to public school, and my my child need to go to a private school and taking the son's uniform and putting it on a child. Well, anyhow, as we prayed, after we prayed, um, she told me said, you know, she finally got a child in school. Not only that, but they offered her a job to the school working there. And they, they're going to reduce the payment. I don't even think she's going to pay much for her children. Uh, plus, she's getting a job to the school where she will be able to put her children there. And she will be able to get the victory. So when the enemy comes in like a flood and thinks he's stopping you, as we prayed for her, I believe we arrested that evil power that was trying to stop a child from getting in school. And as we prayed, we break that. So that's a praise report. Amen? That's a praise report of what God is going to do. And I'm going to pray in a season... Uh, in a second, in this season for you, amen, just hang tight, amen, because I believe that God is getting ready to break some things up in the realms of the spirit, I believe some things that are happening, even some attacks that you are uh, experiencing, some some things that are happening right now is not the result of just natural occurrence, I believe that is a well-orchestrated plan to bring you into frustration, sometimes you wake up in the dream, or you wake up out of a dream, and you have no more existence, you feel totally tired, totally drained, you totally feel like you don't even know where you're going. Your compass is all turned off. And you feel like something was stolen, something was taken, something was, was replaced. Amen. And you feel, you don't feel that fire no more. You don't feel that fire for life. You don't feel that fire. You know, some people wake up out of a dream and then, and then didn't recognize that there was an attack. And they tell their wife they want a divorce. The wife tell the husband, you know, I don't love you no more. I don't want to be in this relationship no more. And they just proceed to walk or not knowing that they were having a dream attack. This is what they do in the dream. All right. Some people, they dream of themselves not finishing tasks. You know, you're not finishing tasks. Or you con you continue serving others in dream. Or you continue a slave and working for someone. Or they're injecting blood out of you. All right? They're always taking blood. Or you're giving blood. Or they're feeding you. Or you're eating in the dream. And they're being mean to you in the dream. That is someone who's trying to set you up. They're trying to close the, they're trying to close the gates of opportunity of your life. And they're trying to set a trap for you to get you in problems with someone when you see those dreams you got to be careful because someone wants to twist your words someone wants to take your words and twist it to someone to create problems and to bring you into confrontation with someone who is going to try to either fight you or to try to diminish your success or try to sabotage you or blackmail you these are all very very potent dreams these dreams point and show you that there is a evil there is an evil mechanism that's working let me tell you something David was a man of God who knew how to pray. David says, David says, At midnight I will rise and give thanks unto thee because of thy righteous judgment. The reason why David was so successful and why God loved David was so much was because David knew how to get a hold of God. Amen. At night time, because David had many enemies. David had many haters. Amen. And this is what happened in Acts 16. You know the story. It says, And at midnight Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prison Prisoners heard them and studied there was a great earthquake so that the foundations, the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately the doors were opened and every ba everyone's bands was loosed. You hear me? What they started to do was praise God in the atmosphere. There's something called a demonic hit squad. Do you know that? They work with the night raiders. There's a demonic hit squad. There's a demonic squad. And these include witches, wizards, spirit husbands, spirit wives. You know about that. All right? Diviners, divinations, uh, divination, uh, witches, and divination workers, and sorcerers, and you have enchanters. These are what I call the demonic hit squad, along with warlocks. They wait for night season. They live in the habitation of cruelty, and they join this they, this group. They join this association, and one of the, one of the ways they join it is they have to be very what very wicked. You have to be a very wicked person and and known to do wicked things. And that's how you join this group. Amen. That's what God is saying in the season. They join this, this group because they do wicked things. That's the qualification to do wicked things. There are people and beings that are now encompassing this earth at midnight and at night season. They are spewing their wickedness. Yes, they are, they are spewing their wickedness at night time. They are spewing curses in, in the morning. You feel the blanket. You feel there's a change in the atmosphere. You feel something happening. You feel somewhere in your neighborhood. And this is what God was saying. God was saying in the season, we got to enforce what our fathers 
and our forefathers went to prayer, amen, to praying at the midnight hour. They prayed and they turned back darkness at the midnight hour and they were not sleepless, they were not sleepless in Seattle. <laughs> they were warriors and they were uh, 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 mighty soldiers in the army of God and they would get up in the night season and they would wage war. Some of them didn't go back to sleep. They would get up 12 and they wouldn't go back to sleep till 4 or 5 in the night waging war against dark powers. So many of us today have our freedom because of what they did, the sacrifice they did. God raised up many of them, many mighty warriors that probably would not even be known except in heaven and definitely in hell because they stayed and paid the price for what we have here today. And this is showing us that there are a lot of things that have been going on at the midnight hour. Many attacks, many sicknesses, many disease, many reversals of fortune, reversals of things, bad news, bank uh, 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 you know, harassment, court harassments, old cases that were dead, old stuff were dead, court cases shifted in the night season because, because there were attacks and they were carried out by this thing called midnight warfare dream. And in the hour of the midnight, the hour of shadows, the hour of turning, God knew about this. Jesus Christ knew about this. That's why he prayed and he said the hour, the hour of shadows has come. This is the hour of shadows, the hour when day is daybreak, but it's still nighttime. But it's a turning point. That's when they begin to operate. That's when they have, have, have their strength. Amen? So you have many satanic ministers. You have many night caterers. And you have power to summon people. There are people that are getting called in their dream. There are people that are, are being called in their dream. There are people that are being called uh, to meetings. Be, they're, they're hearing voices. They're hearing things. They're hearing stuff that go bump in the night. Things in the apartment, for instance, dropping for nothing. Dropping for nothing. Dropping for nothing. Falling off the ground. This happening. That happening in the house. That means that you are being monitored. That means they're monitoring you. And they're monitoring you for evil. Amen? Because that means that you are a person of interest in the realm of the spirit. Hallelujah. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's pray, guys. Let's pray. I want to pray. I won't be long today, but we're going to pray. We're going to pray about destiny demoters. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, as I come before you right now, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I ask that, Father God, you cover everyone on this live right now under the sound of my voice. You cover everyone under the sound of my voice. Cover my brothers and my sisters. Cover all of them that are now watching in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. As I enter into this prayer, as I enter this prayer, I ask that angels, Father God, that would operate. We bind every counterfeit angel. We bind every counterfeit force. We bind every counterfeit uh, thief that would come and supplant or replace, Father God, the blessings of your chosen ones. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I release the heavenly armada. I release the angels, Father God, of war to go into the realms of the spirit right now and to break every power of darkness, break every night caterer that would, that would try to strive and try to steal and raid raid the people's dream hallelujah i cancel your assignment i cancel any of you that have been eating the dream eating in the dream any evil bird that's been flying against your your destiny birds of iniquity birds that whisper in your air birds that whisper in your air evil birds that whisper in your air evil birds that try to destroy your career your life your marriage your destiny i shut you down in the spirit realm i break your power in the mighty name of jesus christ of Nazareth. I decree anybody who's been trying to keep you going around in circles. Every time you go somewhere, it's a problem. Whatever you try to do, wherever you apply, it's a problem. I cancel that over your life right now in the name of Jesus. Every dream that has not that has not served you in the right way and has stolen a part of your destiny, I decree and declare it's canceled right now. I break your power in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I break your power right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I break your power right now over the people of God's life. I command a spirit of anger. You woke up out of the dream and you had anger issues. You were angry, don't even know why. And you've been struggling with anger issues. You've been struggling with a spirit of torment. I decree every tormenting spirit, go in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I break your power right now. I decree every dream manipulation, every dream manipulation. I cancel your assignment in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. 
every spirit of gossip that came into the dream. I break your power in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I break your power in the name of Jesus Christ. Of Nazareth. I come against any recruitment officer from the courts of darkness. Go, I break your power in the name of Jesus Christ. Of Nazareth. I command the spirit of hatred. Some of you woke up and you felt hatred. Hatred for people, hatred for things, hatred for the things of God. You felt hatred for your, your brother's accomplishment, your sister's accomplishment. You felt hatred for where you are in life. You felt hatred for things, for things that you once celebrated. Amen. And now you have a spirit of hatred and a spirit of jealousy. And you can't stand to see others that are being celebrated and that are accomplishing things. I break this power in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I come against the spirit of hardness. I break you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I command you to go. I command you to go. Spirit of stealing. I curse you right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Sexual perversion. I break your power in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I decree right now any Moran powers that have been trying to recruit you to the dark side. I curse this right now. Seeing yourself in the waters. Seeing you're swimming in underwater. Seeing yourself talking to strangers. I break the curse of the stranger. I break it over your life in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I cancel every foul spirit that has been working against you. Every spirit of discouragement. You went to bed fine, well and dandy, feeling really good. And you woke up really depressed. You feel up, You felt uh, are really discouraged. You felt you want to give up. You felt you want to throw the towel. You felt <clears throat> that you just want to get away. You want to leave. You want to move. You want to just, just, just run off this earth. Sometimes it is a spirit of suicide. Sometimes it's unusual and uncommon fear. Rabba Koros, I break the spirit of fear. I break the spirit of fear over your life. I break the spirit of sadness. I command the spirit of sadness to go in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I break you right now. I command you, any spirit that's floating over your house, over your environment, over your atmosphere, in the nighttime, we call them floating spirits. They float around and they watch for openings. Any doors that you've opened, any doors that was open, uncontrollable, uncontrollable hardness of heart, uncontrollable uh, uh, infirmity. You get sick just just for nothing. All right, you get sick and then it goes and it comes again and it goes and it comes again. Just this, just this cycle and circle of sickness. I cancel it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I curse any sickness. I curse cancer. I curse cancer. Anything in your bloodline that will cause you to have cancer. Go. Any spirit that will cause you to worry about cancer. Hallelujah. My cousin had it. My auntie had it. My mother had it. Her, her sister had it. Her, 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 her mother before her had it. Uh, uh, all the men get prostate cancer. I cancel that over your life. In the name of Jesus. I break that generational curse. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I cancel that right now over your heart and over your soul and over your spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I decree right now any spirit of worry, any spirit of blindness, blindness in the physical, blindness in the spiritual. You woke up and your eyes started acting weird. You woke up and your eyes started acting strange, blurry vision, foggy vision, foggy memory. I break you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Come on, lose the people of God. Let them go in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You will lose the people of God. I command you to lose them right now. I will command you to lose them now. Can't finish projects, incompletion of projects. I cancel it right now. You can't finish nothing. I decree and declare you will finish. And I break your power in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Come out of the people of God. I decree they will complete things. Spirit of incompletion. Can't complete nothing. Can't complete a relationship. Can't complete projects. Can't complete uh, uh, dreams and goals and visions. I break your power in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I command you to go. Spirit of violence. Wherever you go, violent things happen. Wherever you go, you attract violence. You attract hatred. I command the spirit of hatred that has been working against you. Go, people that have the spirit of hatred. Wherever you go, you have hatred around you. People hate you for no reason. They quarrel with you. They fight with you. They eventually oust you and cast you out and block you from their group, block you from their ministry, block you from their, uh, 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 you know, their events. Don't tell you what they're doing. I break your power in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I command you to go. I loose you from your assignment right now. I command you to let the people of God go. I decree any spirit that's trying to trap you, spirit that's trying to trap you either in words or in actions. Or try to set you up for failure, set you up to be uh, 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 you know, attacked, set you up to be in a whole heap of trouble. I break your power in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I decree right now, any fetish priest, any fetish priest that's praying against any evil altar, against your life, and trying to fight you in that area. I break your power in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And I command you to loose the people of God. I command every spirit that has been fighting you at the edge of your breakthrough. Every time you're about to see something good happen to you, 
It all goes back from whence it came. I break your power, the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Come on. Let the people of God go. Let the people of God go. I command you to let the people of God go. You hear me. You hear me. You know I'm, I'm talking to you. You know I'm talking to you. You will let the people of God go. For those of you watching right now, this is your time right now to tap into what God is doing and say amen and thank you, Jesus. This is your time to receive your blessing. This is your time to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. I'm receiving my breakthrough. I'm receiving my power back. I'm receiving my power back. Some of you felt in prison. Some of you felt in a cage. Some of you felt like you... You've not lived your true life in a long time. I decree right now that the fire of God will fall upon every evil power. I break your power in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I command you to loose the people of God right now. I break your power in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I command every everything that's been happening to you that will cause you to lose, to lose good things, lose good things, lose your blessings, lose your increase, lose your favor, lose your mind, lose simple things. That were assigned to you. I break your power, the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I command you to let the people of God go. I break your power, the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You will let the people of God go. I decree right now, even in the dream, in the dreams, where they're dreaming a dream and then they wake up in a dream and then there's another dream where they're trying to lock the dream in any spirit of automatic failure, automatic failure, where you fail for nothing. I break your power, the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I decree right now, I command you this Lord, this Lord. This Lord, type kind and right. Come out in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I'm not this Lord, type kind and right. Wherever you are, you've been fighting the people. You've been flying at night time. You've been keeping them back. You've been sabotaging them. I break the power of darkness. I break the power of sabotage over your life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I command you to lose the people of God. I command you to lose the people of God right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Let them go, let them go, let them go, let them go. Let them go, let them go, let them go, let them go. Let the people of God go. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I decree and declare every kind of attack of the adversary. I decree right now that you are being let go. You are being let go. You are escaping that noose. You are escaping the net of the fowler. You are escaping the trap of the fowler. You are being released right now. I decree right now you will wake up. You will warfare. I decree you will be in your right mind. I decree you will not be confused or dazed. I bind and cancel every spirit of confusion over you. I break your power right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Every spirit that wants to keep you in a state of perpetual confusion. Confusion about your destiny. Confusion about your job. Confusion about your career. Confusion about your relationship. Confusion about your life. Confusion about your identity. Who you are. What you are. Fighting you in your mind. Whether you want to be a man or a woman. Whether you be a woman or a man. Confusion about who you are, identity uh, crisis. I break the power of the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I decree anything that wants you to sleep all the way through at night time and not do anything worthwhile. I break the power of the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I decree right now, you spirit of limitation, limit them. They can only go so high and that's it. They cannot go any further and they're limited. I break the power of the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You will let the people of God go. They will go to the highest heights that God ordained for them to go. And they will not be kept back at a certain place at a certain point. I break your power in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I decree. Anybody that's been cursing your profile on Facebook page or social media or Twitter or, or Instagram. That's been cursing your, cursing your photo, cursing your life, cursing you. I break your power in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. There are people that will go on Facebook and they will scan you. And they will scan you and look at you and see what you're doing. And they will begin to curse it at midnight. They'll begin to curse your picture, curse your ministry, curse your following, curse your uh, your platforms. They will begin to curse your life. I break your power in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. There are people right now that are uh, po uh, poised for breakthrough, poised for open heaven, poised for open door. But their heavens have been closed because there are people that have been speaking death to them. I break your power in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You will lose the people of God. And I decree anybody try to close heavens over you. I break the power in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Anybody that try to close your heavens. Mighty God. They try to close the heavens over you. They try to close the heavens over you. I break the power right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I command them to loose you now. Loose you now. Loose you now. I break the power in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Every destiny the border. Every destiny the border. I command you to loose the people of God right now. I decree. Everyone that stole your glory, I decree everyone that stole your glory, I command your glory to be restored. Restore their glory. Restore their glory right now. They stole your glory. They stole your glory. They stole your destiny. They've been messing with your head, messing with your mind, messing with your, your thinking process, 
Some of them had their soul tied up. Some of them had their soul in, in trees and plants, in, 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 in containers. They had your soul in the graveyard. I command you to loose them now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I command you to loose them. Anywhere you've captured their blessings, captured blessings, captured blessings. They've captured your blessings, stolen your blessings. I decree and declare they will loose you now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I decree they will loose you now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Let them go. Loose them now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You will loose them now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I command you to let the people of God go. Let them go. Let them go. Let all their blood reject every spirit of infirmity. They pollute your blood. That's how you get sick in the dreams. They pollute your blood. They pollute people's blood through dream, through the dreams where they exchange your blood for filthy, dirty blood. I decree anybody blood that's been exchanged, I bind that right now and break the power right now. I command you to let them go. Come out, type kind rank. Loose the people of God. Loose them right now. Loose them right now. You're coming out of that grave. You're coming out of that grave. You're coming out of that destiny scattering. You're coming out of that grave. You're coming out of that destiny scattering. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I command you to lose the people of God right now. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I release you from any spiritual cage. Some people feel like they're in a cage. They feel like they're in a cage. They feel like they are being stagnated in life. Every spirit of anti-promotion. Because in a cage, you cannot get promoted. I break your power in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of, Naz of Nazareth. I command you to loose the people of God right now. I command you to loose them right now. Every problem, problem on problems upon problems upon problems. They sponsor problems upon problems upon problems. And you find yourself just having problems that come out of nowhere. I break your power in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I command you to loose the people of God. I decree and I, 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 I submit to you. God, in the name of Jesus Christ, let liquid fire, liquid heat fill the people of God. Like right now, Father God, let liquid fire pour out on every spiritual teeth, every spiritual thief, every spiritual vulture, every culture vulture, every demonic vulture, every vulture that's been waiting around to siphon and steal your blessing, every vulture of spirit. I break the power in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nadrin. Let every attack of night creatures, night crawlers, night caterers. I command you to loose the people of God and I break your power right now. I break you. I break you too right now. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and command you to let the people of God go. Let every demonic tree that's been harboring hidden blessings, hidden blessings, hidden blessings that's yours, I command that evil tree to be uprooted from the root, from the root of your life. I command it to be rooted, uprooted from the root of your life. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I command this thing to be loose from the root. Break in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I command you to loose them right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I command the power and fire of God to loose them right now. Some people woke up paralyzed. Some people woke up with a stroke. Some people had a dream and didn't know what it meant. And they didn't cancel it and didn't walk against it. And a couple days later, a couple months later, there was a stroke. Do you think that it happened just like that? I break the power in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I command you to be broken right now. I paralyze. I paralyze every demonic, every demonic haunting of your life. I command you to be broken right now. Some people, they can't find a job to save their life. I break the power that doesn't want you to find a job, that doesn't want you to have work, that doesn't want you to support and take care of your family. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I command you to lose the people of God right now. Anybody that's holding your blessings, that's kept you the blessings, I command those containers, I command those altars, wherever they are, I command them to shatter. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, you will shatter right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I command you spirit of backwardness, backwardness. Every time they take one step forward, they take 25 backwards. I break this power from the root. I command the root to be cut up, cut up, cut up. I slice you right now and dice you with the very spirit of the living God, the hammer of the Lord, the axe of fire. Go to the root of the problem. Go in the name of Jesus Christ, you foul spirit. I command you to loose the people of God right now. Come on, loose them, loose them, loose them. Loose them. Some of you will feel like you want to spit. You want to vomit. You want to throw up. You'll feel heat. You'll feel itching in your ears. you feel your eyes watering. Some of you will want to, uh, uh, maybe you pass flatulence or feel flatulence. You'll feel your destiny being released. Some of you will feel your destiny being released. Some of you will feel heat. Some of you will feel anger and frustration too because that means that there's something 
that has been fighting you. Some of you, you're going to feel God is moving for you. Some of you are going to feel like you want to just throw up or run to the bathroom. Some of you want to do number one or number two. And I decree and declare right now, even as I'm praying these prayers, mighty God, that you're being loosed. You hear me? You're being loosed. You're being loosed from the things that have held you back for so long. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I sever the ties, the soul tie from the umbilical cord. Some people have your umbilical cord in the realms of the spirit. They have your umbilical cord tied to evil trees, sometimes to evil evil in, inferences. Sometimes you were sacrificed at birth. Sometimes you were sacrificed at, the, at an old age when you were five, six, seven, eight years old. I break your power in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I command you to lose the people of God. You will lose the people of God. You will let them go in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And all your power is broken. I lose them to their destiny. I lose them to their purpose. I lose them to their prosperity. I lose them to their abundance. I lose them to a deeper walk with the Lord. Mighty God. You, wherever you go, people chase you. Wherever you go, whatever church you go to, it's like you're being chased from church. You're being chased from uh, uh, fellowship. You're being chased. It, it starts out good. But the people turn on you. You have church wounds. There are some people that have church wounds and you have not been able to do, to really move uh, move on from that church wound. Mighty God. I break your power, the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You will lose the people of God, even from the church hurt, church pain, and, and church trauma. I call it church trauma. Nothing worse than church trauma. It's one of the wounds that will fall on you for a long time unless the Lord deliver you from those wounds. I decree right now, those wounds, those church wounds and church pain that have kept you bound, kept you in a prison, kept you uh, from moving forward. I decree right now that they're being broken over your life. They cannot hold you anymore. I say they cannot hold you anymore. I say they have to lose you right now. I say, I say that they're being broken right now. You're going to feel heat. Some of you going to feel heat in your body. You might want to yawn. You want to spit. You feel like you, you feel nauseous. You might feel your eyes watering or your nose want to run. You might feel something in your body, like it moving in your body. Because anybody who plays spiritual snakes in your body, I decree anybody who plays spiritual snakes for fibroids and tumors and cysts and any type of, of, of growth in your body right now to cause you to not be able to conceive in the realms of the spirit and in the natural, I command those things to come out right now. I command those things to come out right now and to loose you, loose you, loose your destiny. I break every spirit of heart attack. Heart failure. I, de I decree any broken heart. Your heart been broken so much from so many people and so, from so many relationships. I command that thing to be broken over your life. Every unconscious, unconscious association with the large religious system, cults, and close friends who are attached to fraternities and frats that have been causing you to enter into a cursed life. I break the power of the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nether. I command you to let them go, let them go, let them go, let them go. I take authority over every department that your life has had concerning the blessing and loose the blessing to you on both sides of your family, on your mother's side, on your father's side. I release the blessing to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nether. I decree any automatic failure mechanism that's working against your life. I command this thing to be severed. And to be broken, going 20 generations back in your bloodline. I command bloodline genetic curse that has been operating as a failure mechanism in your life to hinder good things. I command every spirit of anti-marriage to fall against you. Any spirit of completion, incompletion that doesn't want you to complete project, doesn't want you to finish storm, that wants to fight you on a job. The minute you get a job, they start fighting you two, three weeks later. The minute you get a promotion, they try to take the promotion from you. The minute you get a promotion, they hating on your promotion. They hating on you. They try to diminish what God has already done for you. I break your power, the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I command you, you foul spirit. I command you right now to be broken. Any deformity, any infirmity, any sickness in your body and in your, in your life and in your family bloodline going back. 20 generations. I break it right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I curse any curse that's been working against you. I break it right now. I cut and destroy all fetters, all chains, all links, all bonds, all, all, all linkages that's been holding you to the past. Any spiritual soul tie, any spiritual soul tie that's not of God, I break it right now over your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that held you in one place, held you in a state of disrepair, held you in a state of unachievement and where you cannot achieve anything. I break it right now. 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 I command you to loose them up and out of the people of God. 
up and out, up and out, up and out. You will lose the man and woman of God. You will lose them right now. Chains are falling off. Feathers are falling off. I decree that even right now, handcuffs are falling off. Dreams where you're being arrested. Dreams where they're, 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 they're summoning you. Dreams where you're before an evil court case. Dreams where you're finding yourself running from dead people. Dreams where dead people are sleeping with you. Dreams where dead people are fighting you. Dreams where dead people are biting you. Dreams where animals are chasing you. All of these are failure mechanisms that are trying to fight against your life. I break them right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You find insects biting you. Insects. Insects biting you in a dream. Insects all over your house. Insects all over your, uh, your counter. Insects all over your car. Insects all over your door. Insects in your bed. Then you wake up in real life and you find out that insects are truly biting you. All of a sudden, strange insects start to come in your house. All of a sudden, strange creatures start to come where you've never seen before. All of a sudden, you see them. I mean, just uh, a proliferation of just spiders all over your house. I decree and declare right now that that foul spirit that's trying to build an atmosphere in your realms and in your environment, I crush it right now. I crush it right now. I curse it right now at the root in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Every spirit of delay, demonic delay, delay in marriage, delay in permit, delay in business license, delay in promotion, delay in, 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 in inheritance, delay in court rulings, delay in, in, in things that were supposed to be easy, delay in your paycheck, delay in elevation, delay in your increase, delay in getting things. Delay in things you order in. They reroute and send it to China. They reroute and send it to Indonesia. Delay in your vehicles. Delay on your vehicles. Your car always break on down. Car always give you problems. Car always giving you issues. Car always causing those things to fall. Amen? Like you find your car, uh, one day it works good, the next day it working bad. The next day it works good, the next day it working bad. You spend more money with your car and the mechanics. And then it's like you go into these the mechanics that just want to take advantage of you and just give you a big bill and the car still ain't running right. I decree that time and that season is over. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I decree anything that they have hidden in your body. I command any spirit of the cockatrice. Yes, cockatrice is a demon spirit that actually goes into your body. Hallelujah. Through trauma, through hurt, through open doors and lays eggs in your head, lays eggs in your body and waits and waits for the right opportunity. For those eggs to hatch. It's almost like a parasite. Have you ever seen a wasp? What are those wasps that, that just attacks a spider or attack a creature or attack a roach? They drug the roach by stinging them. Then they lay eggs in the creature. All right? And then it takes about a month or two. Then the creature begin to, the, the creature's offspring, which are little worm like parasites, begin to eat the creature from within. And they eat them within and they kill them from within. Anything that's killing you from within. Anything that's killing your mind, where you have warfare in your mind, you're worrying in your mind. Most of the time, you don't know who to trust. You have a spirit of paranoia because you don't know who's real from who's not because there's such a war in your mind. I command and decree that the, the warfare and the mind battles cease right now. Every mind battle concerning you, concerning your mind, concerning your issues, concerning your life. I command the spirit of joblessness, joblessness. I command the spirit of joblessness and the attack on your family to be broken in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I command every single thing that's been holding on to your destiny, holding on to your birthright, <laughs> holding on to your fire. Some, sometimes it's you, you've lost the fire of God in your life. You've lost the fire for, for God. You've lost the joy of the Lord. You've lost the joy of the Lord where you were on fire because you've been angry with God because these attacks have been coming at you so hard. And you've been wondering what's happening. Where is God in the season? Why has God not shown up? Why has God not showed up for me? And I'm wondering what happened to me. Why am I going through this? I can't understand even why I'm feeling this way. Lord, help me. Because I know that I don't even understand why my jaw wake up. One day I went to sleep and my jaw now twists. When I woke up, I have air problems. I have gum problems, teeth problems. I wake up right now, my limbs hurting, my joints hurting. And nothing was wrong with me. I command that thing to be broken over you. Break right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I command this thing to loose you now. Loose you now. Loose them by fire. I command any type of any type of attack against you. Any reprisal. Any systematic attack by covens. Yes, they take turns at the covens fighting your life. And they take your cakes before their satanic high court. And they begin to pursue your life. It's almost like when they send a summons for you in the realms of the spirit with the government or with the police station. They got spiritual polices that are really just witches, all right? They police and they enforce these summons. They enforce these warrants. 
and they bring you before their evil court and they begin to render judgment on you and try to fight you so your life will become ineffective and, and, and inefficient and it will be trouble after trouble so you end up what I call in a spiritual prison. You may not see it, may not feel it, you might still be walking around, still dressing well, smelling well, but your life doesn't reflect the victory that you already know that you're supposed to get because you know that God promised you these things and God is not a liar. God is not a man that should lie. So that means that there's something fighting your life. Once you've checked your life and you've renounced and repented of all evil or anything you've done, then you know that there's something operating behind the scene and there's invisible barriers that are trying to keep you. I command and break every invisible barrier that's been trying to keep you from walking in the things of God, walking in the favor of God, walking in the promotion and elevation that God has granted you, walking in the favor of God. Anytime they're fighting you on a dream, you will notice in the dream where you find him, all kinds of strange things in your office. You'll find things in your office. You'll find things that are happening where they're trying to get you to move. They're trying to memo you up. They're trying to report you. Uh, you see it happen in the dream. And then three or four days later, you get you get some sort of report or you get something from headquarters saying you did that, you did this, you did that. It's a lie from the pit of hell. They want to unseat you. They want to move you because they want their evil crew and their evil, their evil clan to have control. And your presence, your presence is really... What is, what is irking them because they can't fully release their evil deeds and so they need you gone. That's why they include you out of certain things. They don't even include you in certain things. They talk around you. They talk in codes. They talk behind your back. They talk when you're out of the office and then when you come in the office, you feel the heat of the arrows and the daggers that was put in your back. You know they've been talking about you no matter how nice you were, no matter how kind you were, no matter how, how much you try to be there for them and try to show them kindness. They still... Go and do evil against you. But guess what God is saying? Even the evil they're doing is still working out in your favor. Even the evil they're doing is pushing you into purpose and working in your favor for a more expected end that you cannot even understand or see or, or think about because they thought they had you caught up. They thought that you were they thought that you were uh, you're gonna lose your mind. They thought they were taking bread out your mouth. They thought they were closing doors on you. But the Lord said even that door that they were trying to close on you was too small. I got a bigger door I want to open for you. I got a major door I want to open for you. And they can't even understand this door. Because the door where I'm taking you is going to give you so much blessings, so much peace, so much, so much joy. And you can look at, you can look, you can look at, you can look at these ones that, that were happening to you and you will laugh at it. Let them fight over their petty job. Let them fight over their petty promotion. Let them fight over their petty clicks. They better move you. They better transfer you to a different department. They better get you moved because of political connections. They better switch things on you because they think that they are spiting you. They think that they are they think that they are holding you down. They think that they are defeating you. But the Lord is allowing that to happen because he have an expected end and is using that even to take you into a different uh, dimension. He's taking you around the bend so they will not see how you're moving and when they see how you're moving it'll be too late because god gonna put you so far ahead of them they won't know what happened and when they do find out it will spin their head literally spin their head their head will be spun all all they can do all they can do is snicker and scoff and make noise but they can't do nothing because guess what the lord is doing this thing what they meant for evil the lords are working out for good all those night attacks they send it against you yes all those night attacks all those evil dreams all those night caterers that have been trying to have sex with you in a dream. Yes, have sex with you in a dream. Trying to mess with you in a dream. Trying to feed you in a dream. Trying to destroy you in a dream. Trying to bring all these insects and, and bugs and, and different type of indiscretions in a dream. Taking you on different journeys. All these different journeys. Some dreams are so perplexing you can't even understand them. And that's what they're designed to do. They're so perplexing that you can't even understand them. And that's because, that's because they want you not to understand them. Because they want you to be confused, so you will know how to warfare against them. And then sometimes when it doesn't work, they give you 50 to 60 dreams a night. You have 60 dreams, and so by the time you finish one dream, you have 60, 75 more dreams, and you make no sense of it. So they're trying to overload you with evil dreams, overload you with dream, with dream saturation, and, uh, and dream overload, so you will be fighting so much wars on different fronts. Because, because they know that you are a person of interest. Because God is raising you up. God is going to use you mightily. That's why they're afraid of you. That's why they see you as a threat. That's why they invest so much time coming in your dreams. That's why they invest so much time uh, trying to take bread out of your mouth and trying to stop you. That's why they're trying to attack your family. That's why they're trying to attack your children. That's why they're trying to stop promotion, elevation. That's why they're trying to use their evil clicks to try to bring you down. But I break the power right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Every spirit that try to close doors of your life, every closed door, 
But you see in a dream where doors are closing in your face. Doors are shutting in your face. Hallelujah. You're seeing windows shut in your face. You're seeing you're reaching later at work, later the appointment, later uh, your job. These are all signs of dream demotion. They want to demote you in the realm of the spirit. But I break your power right now, foul spirit. I command you to loose the people of God right now. And I command you to loose them and let them go. Let them go. Let them go. Loose them now in the name of Jesus Christ. Every dream demotion. Every dream demotion. Every dream demotion. I command you right now, you foul spirit, wicked spirits that have been assigned, that are laying low, hidden, hidden. They hide themselves very well. They're good at doing it. It's called covert dream assassination where they hide and wait and bide their time they're very patient and then they attack and when they attack it's like you don't see it coming because they they have laid wait and they have set their ambush they have set the ambush every ambush criminal that are waiting for you in the natural and in the physical some people have set where people are supposed to rob you and then kill you they're supposed to rob you then rape you they've set this in the realm of the spirit for it to happen like as an accident and take your life and you think oh man that's just another statistic this man just died like that. no it's because it's because someone watchful in prayer someone prayerful someone wasn't covering they didn't know how to cancel the dream they saw and thought it was a joke and they didn't they didn't cancel it and so the enemy came through that door and it played out in life it's like a movie sequence and this is what happens a lot of people don't recognize that your dream is super important it is so super important. It is more important than anything you can imagine. And right now, because the Lord is loosing His Spirit upon all flesh to dream, the enemy is also loosing His Spirit upon all flesh to have nightmares and the bad dreams and have dreamed emotions. So He's kind of pervert and corrupt and defile the dream. And so people are dreaming things and then they woke up sometimes with such a confusion, such tremendous migraines and headaches. A lady said, Prophet, I need you to pray for me. She said, I had this dream 20 years ago and I'd gotten rid of it uh, through a prayer group. She said, but what happened is a, a bird, a black bird flew into my apartment in the dream and pecked me right here at my temple. And from that time, I had debilitating migraine headaches where I literally shut down, was going out of my mind. And I had debilitating migraines where I totally shut down. When this thing came upon me, it was like I, I just literally would go crazy. You hear me? I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't make it because... After that dream, it came back again 20 years later. It waited for time. It waited for time. And it came back again. And the same, the same bird showed up in a dream. And pecked her. You hear me? According to what I did when he was praying for her, as, as far as I remember. And this was the battle. This was the battle with this lady. She was being attacked so much. And it was such a hard thing. And she was like going out of her mind. I want to pray with you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, anybody who is going out their mind, anybody who is having mind, mind battles, mind wars, I break your power in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I cover you with the blood of Jesus. Anybody who is going through mind battles, mind wars, you're going through mind battles, mind wars, you're going through mental uh, mental attacks, amen, where you attack in the mind, your, your battle is in the realms, where you feel heavy, you feel depressed. You feel weighed down. You feel like there's a that like the weight of the world is on you. <clears throat> you feel like like everything is gloomy and dark. Amen. And there's no there's no there's no light at the end of the tunnel. There's no rainbows. You're seeing just dark clouds. That means that that barring that there's no chemical deficiency. That means that you are having you are having an attack in your mind. And there's a lady that said that's me. That's Anna Grant. Anna Grace Grant. But I cover you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I cover you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, woman of God. And I break every power that has been fighting against your mind. This is coming from Anna Grace Grant. I cover your mind, woman of God. Right now, I break the power of every dark, dark, dark deed that has been done against your mind. I loose your mind from every dark power that has been attacking your mind. Every evil hand that has its hand upon your head and squeezing your brain squeezing those parts of you that that is responsible for joy and peace i curse it and crush the evil hand right now i curse the evil hand right now and i command that evil hand to wither up over your life wither up over your life depression heaviness sadness you're feeling down you're feeling in the doldrums or the dumps you're feeling way down you're feeling like you know worst case scenario you're always thinking about what's going to happen bad it's like Every time you think, it's like 
What about something bad that's going to happen? You're always thinking about the worst case scenario. That's the enemy penetrating your mind. Every superstructure and every every uh, 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 mind control stronghold that developed in your brain and mind, Anna, Grace Grant, I lose you from it in the, in the name of Jesus Christ. I command anything to be broken. If you have some, if you have some anointing oil, anoint your forehead and anoint the top of your head in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I break and sever every demonic linkage with depression. I curse depression. I curse depression. I curse depression at the source. There's a demon called depression. There's a demon called depression. I curse this right now. And I break your power in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And I command your brain to function properly. All the proper functioning of your brain and the process and the chemicals and everything to secrete properly. Amen. Let there be a proper secretion in the brain and in the thought patterns. Every evil thing that's trying to hijack your soul. I curse this thing at the root, Anna Grace Grant, against you. Anything that has your soul tied up. Anything that has your soul bound. Any fragmentation and scattering of your soul, Anna Grace Grant. I cancel it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I break its power over your life right now. Receive your healing. Receive your deliverance. Receive your peace. Receive your joy. Receive it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I command every foul spirit that's fighting anyone on this live, in your mind, in your thoughts, in your in your emotions. Emotion simply means what it is. It is emo, emote, emote. All right. That means it has the ability of a C. Up and down, up and down. Any emotion, emotion or energy in motion. I command that thing to loose you now. In the name of Jesus, I release the power of the living God to cut, break, bind, snap, cramp, paralyze, rip, shred, and eviscerate, annihilate, obliterate, and destroy those mental <coughs> mind powers and those mental demons that are uh, specialists in dealing with the mind. They are mind demons. All they do is they project into your mind hideous thoughts, hideous outcomes. They are experts. These spirits, they do nothing else but project. Their head big like this. Their head like this because they're just pure head. Their head huge. They're just one big head. Have you ever seen um, this guy? He's a, I mean, we read about him in the comics. <coughs> he was just one big giant head. He was like a brain and he had like two little small hands. He looked like Humpty Dumpty. That's how they are the spirit because they are pure mind. They are mind. They work mind to mind. And so they, they link mind to mind and they project it into your head. And that's why some people can't seem to get out of systems and, and, and these mind battles because there's a sustained attack by these creatures to attack your mind because they want to keep you in a place where they could drive you insane. Amen? And then they want to introduce fear because fear is the mind killer and fear is what opens the door for the spirit of death. I curse any spirit of death, any death by accident, death by mishap, death by uh, 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 freakish uh, coincidence. Many people are dying just, just for stupidness. I cancel it and curse it at the root and command it to be broken right now over your life. You will live and you will not die and you will declare, you will declare the works of the Lord in the land of the living. You will declare the works of the Lord in the land of the living. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I shut down every evil, every evil gate that's been opened of your life. I shut down every reckless foundation, every reckless foundation, any objects that is in your possession that's not of God. I cancel it. 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 You will go forward. You will go forward. You will not go backwards. I decree that you will go forward. You will go forward. For God speak it once, yea, twice. Yet man perceived it not in a dream, in a vision of the night. When deep sleep fallen upon men and slumberings upon the bed, that he opened the ears of men. I've seen the instruction that he may withdraw man from his purpose and hide pride from him. He keep it back his soul from the pit and his life from perishing by the sword. Job 33 and 14 uh, through 18. This is what God is doing. God is trying to get us to not what? To not perish by the sword. So sometimes even God sends us dreams of warning. These dreams that you're coming in, those are God, those are uh, dreams God is allowing to take place so it can warn you. Get up and pray, all right? Get up and pray. Begin to pray. Begin to wake up at night time. Don't sleep all through the night. Get back up on the night watch 
and recognize that your dream is your spiritual monitor. Your dream is your preview of what is to come. Your dream is telling you what is going on in your life. I wrote an excellent book on dreams. This book is really a great book on dream interpretation, on dream symbols, dream signs. Uh, and it has to be, it has so many different uh, uh, um, computations on what certain dreams mean and certain com combinations on what they mean. Your dream is what is preparing you for your future. You hear me? Your dream is a future preview of what the Lord and the Holy Spirit has in store for you. Your dream, do not tell lies. Your dream is telling you the truth. Let's say, for instance, you dream your sister has been lying to you or your sister cheating. Or you dream your sister cheating with another man. All right? <laughs> or she cheating on her husband. <clears throat> Tell us that God is trying to tell you and warn you in the dream that your sister, or it could be a sister who's in church or someone you consider a sister, she's either thinking about stepping out of her marriage or she's engaging in a, a, in a uh, adulterous affair. That means that you need to tell about the dream and then you need to pray. Amen? It might not happen. It might have been happening. And it might not happen or it's about to take place. Because dreams are a foreshadowing of your future. It is the best version of yourself. It is what God is using you to take you into your next dimension. All right? So God is saying, uh, when you see dreams come, the first thing to do is bring it before the Lord. Bring it before the Lord and say, Lord, if this dream is not of you, I ask that, Father God, you you will destroy this dream in the name of Jesus Christ. So that I cancel this dream. But God, if this is for me, if this dream is for me, and there's something I need to learn in this dream, then I ask that God, you will allow the path that's for me to come to pass. But those that are evil, and, and that path which is not of God, I cancel that right now, and I destroy it at the root, and I I, I, I I cancel any implications of this manifesting in the natural. I decree this shall not manifest in, in my realm, in my heavens. My heavens will not be closed. My heavens will not be closed, right? Because these dreams have come to close your heavens, amen? And they come to reverse things. Like the lady said, she went to take her son there who had already got a scholarship. And it was already given to him by the government. When she went there, they said they couldn't find no records of the fact that he got a scholarship. And then when she took him to the next school, he stayed there and screamed all day, right? And the people thought he was, you know, you know, was, you know, he was not intelligent, but he's a smart, he's a smart kid. But the Lord worked it out as we prayed, as we were praying on his live. And she, I don't think she was on, but she came and tell me uh, on the Tuesday when I saw her, she said, listen, I don't know what happened. Someone was praying for me. I said, you know, we did pray for you on the live. We mentioned the dream and we prayed. She said, well, let me tell you what happened. I took him to the school and the people took him and my other daughter. And now they offered me a job working there. And they said, they're going to take something out every week. Right? Every week. And my salary is basically just a little something. And they could go there basically, you know, uh, free. So God turned the thing around. Amen? Just like how God turned the captivity of the saints on so many occasions, God is turning your captivity as well. God is turning things around for you. Amen? This is what God is doing in the season. Anything with poverty, any poverty that they're trying to open up to you, there's, there's, yeah, there's a spirit of witchcraft poverty. They will open up witchcraft poverty over you and they will try to bring embarrassment. And then the check bouncing, you know, the checking claim, your salary just going, you have, you're making the money, you can't see your salary, you know, you, you, you know your, your money just go to pay bills. You all you're doing is paying bills, paying a bunch of bills, paying a bunch of bills. And so you find that you're, you have multiple attacks, multiple dream attacks, and you cannot see this money, you cannot see these finances. You're just barely, barely just making it, barely just keeping yourself above board. Amen. They're taking from you, stealing from you, they're ripping from you, they're they're literally cornering you, they're 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 siphoning off your blessings, and they're taking it, and they're keeping it uh, in their evil in their evil uh, 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 barnyards and their evil banks. All right. Uh, they transfer your blessings. They trade in blessings. They trade in blessings. I decree anybody that attack your blessings and has it, has it, has it in an evil storehouse, in an evil bank, any evil warehouse. Yes, they do that, guys. I'm telling you, they they will trade. Uh, they will trade your blessings and trade your virtues and trade your glory, amen, for evil. They will give you evil, and you find that nothing works. Everything goes bad. You know, people who once were interested in you. People who are about to bless you, they suddenly say they don't even know what happened. All right? Or the person die who's about to bless you. Or they get fired from the job when you're supposed to start the job. 
this is how these evil powers work. Yes, they were supposed to open doors for you. They were supposed to give you. Some people got big blessings. And they said, guess what? I come in to be a blessing to you. Get ready. You wanted a house. I was going to buy down for you. And all of a sudden, when they look again, the person tell you, you know what happened? Man, I don't know what happened, but they took out all of my money, the bank hold of my check now, and they said I owe some back tax and this, that, and, and, they, and they gave me back, they gave me about $5,000 out of, out of $300,000. I've had that happen to people. And they got the blessings. They got the blessings. I told people you can get $300,000, $400,000. God can bless you with a tremendous amount of money. They got it. And then, and because they had these things still operating, all right, in their life, they put the check to get cash. The bank took it, held the check, gave them what's equal two grand back. You hear me? Out of 300, maybe 300, 260,000, gave them what's equal three thousand dollars back. Take the whole thing. But you owe us money and you know interest and this and that and that. That's what they do. That's what they do. And I decree and declare. That's what we were breaking. In our last service we had on uh, two Saturdays back, we were breaking so much things, you had to bend in the atmosphere to feel it. There's a difference between when you are there in the atmosphere, God does tremendous miracles that we don't even want to put on. There was also tremendous deliverance. One lady, she vomited blood for the whole service, and they were trying to kill her. And I told her, you know, they were trying to kill you from from a different country. And God confirmed the word and allowed her to vomit. We thought we thought she was just vomiting up stuff, but when the workers and my wife told me they the body they to take it outside, it was pure blood coming out of this woman. They had they had tainted her blood, they had poisoned her blood. And they built these altars to bury this woman. This woman nearly escaped with her life from her country. Amen. They had planned to kill her, but she was really smart. Amen. And she didn't let them know when she was going to do things. And I told her what they planted in her belly. And we didn't know. When she looked, she showed me the deep cut in her belly where they had to take out all these fibroids. I said, that wasn't fibroids. When I, got, I told her, I said, there's snakes in your belly. And I told her before she even showed it to us. And then she uh, you know, showed us the cut. <coughs> and the surgery had and these fibroids. Right? They were not fibroids. They looked like fibroids, but they were really... They planted snakes in a woman's belly, to be honest with you. And this was to block anything from coming into life and to give this woman cancer uh, and to just kill her. You know, kill her right there, uh, um, right right in the hospital. You know? And this is what the enemy wants to do, was to take us out. I decree and declare nobody, nobody, nobody on this life shall lose their life, shall die a freak as death, shall die before the time, but you shall live and declare the, the grace of the Lord. Yeah, you shall declare the grace of the Lord. And anybody else who's going to be watching this on YouTube, amen, on YouTube, you guys are watching this on YouTube, Facebook, wherever you're going to be seeing this, I want you to know that God can cure incurable diseases. God can cure incurable sickness. God can cure every verdict of death. You hear me when they tell you, you need to go home, get your house in order, you can die. You know, you or you just discover the news. They just try to take your job from you, and you know that that's the main source of how you pay your bills. I say that God can cure any incurable diseases. He can cure any sickness. He can cure anything that they try to bring to you. He can bless you even more so than when they think they close the door on you. God can make a way out of nowhere. He will give you rivers in the desert and streams in the wilderness. You hear me? Rivers in the desert and streams in the wilderness. He turns wise men backwards. The king's hand, the king's heart is in the Lord's hand. He twists it wherever he wants to go. You hear me? I want you to be a friend of Jesus. Be a friend of Jesus. Surrender everything to him. Repent and confess of sins. Repent and confess of sins. Repent and confess of sins. And then change your attitude. Change your mindset, change your ways. Some people have mean, mean ways. All right, they got mean, bad ways, and that's what's causing them to be to be in this condition right now. Some people gossip and don't even recognize they gossiping. Some people slander people. Some people just can't see people blessed. Some people just just always angry. You need to ask God to help you with that. All right, then ask God to baptize you with with, with the Holy Ghost and fire. Amen. Be rebaptized. Be rededicated amen because because even listen to these prayers if you if you don't want to live right and do what is right if you don't want to live holy amen then then you're going to find that that the enemy attacking you more you have to give up what you're doing amen and that's the thing about it some people don't want to give up what they're doing and so they they want to hold on with the blessings but they don't want to they want to lose things you got to lose it right lose it let it go 
make up your mind to live for the Lord. Bring all your weakness, bring all your weakness before Him. He knows your frame, He already knows what you, you struggle with. And so, God, this is what I struggle with. I need you to help me. All right? And I need to take this desire for me. Some people, they smoke. They love the Lord, but they can't find it. They find themselves smoking. They love the Lord, but they find themselves always hitting a bottle. They love the Lord with all their heart, but they find themselves going and doing things. You know, I can't, I can't get, you know, I, I, I just have to, I just have to break off something when I can find it. All right? They don't, they don't really want to do these things, but they've been drawn. All right? They find themselves going back and playing cash tree, lotto, and they know the Lord has been dealing with them on that. They find themselves going back and doing things they don't want to do, right? Because they need, they have to have things taken care of. There are some people that are listening right now. God says, submit to him. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. This is James 4 and 7. James 4 and 7. Submit to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. The operative word is, res is submit. Okay? That means in all things, bring it before the Lord. Bring it before the Lord. Lord, I bring this case before you. God, I have some old hatred in my heart that I won't let go. God, they did me wrong. They hurt me bad. I have some old unforgiveness from what they did to me for that time. And they, yes, they, well, listen, they, they really did some things now. Oh, God. But it's, I find it difficult losing them. I find it difficult losing some of those family members that have been trying to fight me. All right? For nothing. And trying to fight me over situations that I don't even know about. Bringing me into confusion. Trying to mess with my life. Trying to trying to destroy my life. Trying to attack me without provocation or without cause. And God, I have to leave them to you. Because I want to really deal with them. But I want to leave them to you. I will pray for them. I'll pray against those evil powers that are operating and using them. But Lord, I need you to break these powers. I need you to break these powers. Because the Lord said in Luke 10 and 19... That, that no weapon formed against you will prosper. Amen? You'll walk upon serpents and scorpions, and no power of the enemy will harm you. You hear me? The scorpions and the snakes. You'll trample upon snakes and scorpions. All right? And no power of the enemy will harm you. This is Luke 10 and 19. According to, according to Isaiah 54 and 17, the weapon will form, but it will not prosper. All right? No weapon formed against you will prosper. Every time the rise of a judgment shall be condemned. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I decree right now that anyone who's fighting you over property, over land, over houses, over title, you entitled to the house. That's your house. That was left for you. Now they, they fight you against it. You entitled to the money from the insurance company. They fight you against it. They fight you. You entitled to, to, uh, to, the, uh, to your, your father's investments or your, or, you know, your sibling investments or, or, or your fair share of, the, or, of, of what was left for you. And they're fighting you for it. They're fighting you for the land. And sometimes these lands are generational lands that go way back and they're still fighting you over the land and property. They're still fighting you over stuff that's yours. Amen? I decree and I declare right now that that spirit that, that tried to fight you, that has been attacking you, I command that spirit to be broken right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I decree, I decree right now that you, you, according to Psalms 91, that also tread upon the lion and, and Adam, young lion and the dragon, that also trample under feet. Yes, according to Psalms 91, you can trample on the young adder, on the lion, and the dragon. If you know what these, what these things represent in the spirit, they are principality spirits. These are powerful spirits. And the Lord said you will trample upon them because you trusted the Lord. Amen? And the Lord will be your deliverer and your defender. But you've got to go and wage war. You've got to wage war in the spirit. <coughs> you cannot listen to what the enemy is saying because he will try to make you feel like nothing happened to you. You see how things are getting worse? You see how they look like they're winning? You see how that thing looks like it happened? And he wants you to confess with your mouth the, the problem, amen? And God says, I want you to confess with your mouth the solution. I want you to give me praise in the midst of it. Because he wants you to say, see, see? Yeah, you know, not, 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 nothing ever working for me. Everybody's getting blessed but me. I don't know what's going to happen, but, but I don't know how it's happening. You know, uh, uh, yeah. they say I could dead soon. You know, um, with this, my, my sickness, you know, my, my diabetes, you know, uh, my, my, my headache, my, my inflammation. You know, my bad knees, you know, uh, uh, yeah. nobody in this family is ever make it. Nobody in this family is make it. Nobody in this family is going anywhere, you know. And so you continue to confess that. And that can be your reality because what, what happened is we, 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 can, we can have what we say, but we're saying what we have. Amen. That's the word of the Lord. We need to confess what God says about us. We need to confess that word of our life. 
We need to just literally begin to say what God is saying concerning our life. Hallelujah. And we need to just say, God, I know how it looks in the natural. Oh, my God. Yes, my eyes, my senses, my nose, my smell. Everything in me is crying out to say something wrong. I really want to speak my peace on this situation. But you're telling me, do not speak what you feel or what you think you see. Because even so, I'm going to change it for you. Because your word is going to what change your circumstances. Your word is going to justify you or it's going to condemn you. Because this is what happens. Even when you have a bad dream or when you have an evil dream, you immediately get into prayer. You immediately begin to cancel those things. You immediately begin to come against those stubborn enemies. You immediately begin to what fast and pray because some kind does not go except but by prayer and fasting. Amen? I said some kind does not go except but by prayer and fasting combined with repentance, renunciation, rededication, and closing doors. you got to close doors. You cannot be playing with the devil. You cannot take fire into your bosom and not be burned. Some people, they will do these prayers and say all these prayers, but they're not changing their lifestyle. It does not, it does not line up. And so what happens is they get more attacks and more attacks because they don't want to give up certain things and certain habits that the Lord has been trying to get them to release from day one. And so right now, we take authority over every foundational dream where there's pollution in the foundation. Because scripture says, if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Your foundation is the sustenance of your life. Without your foundation, you cannot stand. Your foundation really is your feet. Some people's feet are dirty. Some people's feet have been cursed. Some people's feet are stepped into things that curse their life. Some people don't recognize that if the foundation that holds up anything, you never hear them talk about the foundation. You never talk about uh, uh, the foundation, even the hole up the whole house. The foundation is the balance, right? That keeps everything in order. If your foundation is corrupted, what can you do? If your foundation is is is, is spoiled, when the when the foundation is faulty. You know what happened? The house eventually caves in or cracks. If termites, if termites come into your house, you know what they do? They come into your foundation. If the foundation doesn't have a barrier there, or of termite, termite side, for termites, they coat it with termite side. Right? They create a bar. They create a barrier because they know that termites are uh, another form of destroyers. If you see termites in your dream or ants in your dream, it is a spirit that comes to destroy. They are destroying spirits because they eat at things without you knowing. They eat at things without you recognizing it. And they come into the foundation. They look for holes. They look for holes and gaps inside the foundation that the, that the chemical missed or over time eroded. That's why you got to make sure your foundation is, is sealed and you got to do a touch-up every now and then on your foundation because they penetrate the foundation. Then they get into the foundation. Then they fly into the wood all around your house and begin to eat the structure of your house. Many times people were thinking they were standing on solid ground or solid wood or standing on solid um, 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 stairways only to find that they fell through the stairway. They fell off the railing. Why? Because the railing looked solid on the outside but the inside was eaten up by termites. And the foundation was faulty. You hear me? And they had these little things eaten away at their foundation. And they probably saw them, but didn't know what they were. They thought they were ants. They thought they were they thought they were ants. And so they didn't pay them no mind. Not knowing that these fellas were eating you out of a house. Literally out of a house and a home. Destroying your home. That's what spiritual warfare is like. They begin to eat at the foundation. It doesn't happen overnight, guys. People don't backslide overnight. This happens slowly, slowly slowly where you start to lose the love of god you start to lose the favor you start to lose the fire then you start to not want to pray then you start to miss service then you start to miss teaching then you start to do this then you start to do that but slowly slowly you're moving away from the things of god slowly you're losing that foundation is being polluted is being destroyed and these things are doing it very systematically very very organized very efficiently because they operate from a hierarchical system they operate from a a, 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 a hive mind. They have a hive mind, right? They have a hive mind. And so they operate very efficiently. Everyone knows their place. And so they're very methodical and militant about destroying your life and very systematic. 
I decree any militant spirit, any militant demon that has been systematically destroying the foundation and structure of your ministry, of your life, of your ministry, of your life, of your business, of your career, of your marriage, of your family, of your of your of your abundance, your ministry can't grow, your life can't grow. You can't see no progress in nothing. And you've been in ministry 30, 40, 50 years. You can't see nothing really happening. Amen. You cannot break through into the into the higher realms of God in where you're supposed to be for the things concerning the work you put out there because they've been systematically attacking your life through a very militant campaign against your life, strategically, militantly, efficiently, ruthlessly, and very organized. I decree that there will be confusion in the camp, even as the Lord turned the captivity of Gideon and they and and then they begin to fight against each other. <clears throat> as a matter of fact, the Lord had to send him a dream where giant bread was rolling down and it crushed all of the enemies. Amen. And and then they said, This is nothing but the sword of the Lord, Amen. And that's how it gave Gideon confidence. May the Lord send your enemies terrifying dreams to let them know to leave you alone. Stop messing with the people of God. Stop messing with them because you need to stop messing with God's people. You've been warned. You've been told to stop it. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I decree every grave they open for you, they will be buried in the, in the name of Jesus Christ. Every demonic trap they've set for you, I command it to scatter in the name of Jesus Christ. I command it to scatter in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Every demonic trap, trap, trap they've set for you, for you to walk in, for you to stumble in, for them to trap you with words, trap you with actions, twist your words for phone calls, for you to sign something you shouldn't sign. Hallelujah. I crush it. I cancel it. I break it. I decree it. Scatter. I destroy it right now. I destroy it. I destroy it. I destroy it with the blood of Jesus. I combat every demonic conspiracy against your life. Every evil confederacy that they've tried to loose upon your life. Hallelujah. For you to lose your mind, lose your grace. Lose your favor. Lose everything concerning you. I break its power right now. <coughs> in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, And lose uncommon favor over you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I decree and declare. That this is the season and the time. Hallelujah. For God to display you more than you've ever dreamed possible. This is the season when God is pulling you out of the cave. You're coming out of that cave. You're coming out of seclusion. You're coming out of isolation. Isolation. You're coming out of that cave and you're coming into the sunlight. You're coming into God's unlimited, unmerited favor. There's enough of that cave now. Enough of living in, in a hidden existence. Now it's time for you to come out. Now it's time for you to put your light, your light on the hill and not bury it amen, under a bushel and let the world see your light. Amen. Let the world see your light. Let the world see that you are special and that you are awesome. And that you're going to do something for the Lord. Amen. And that you're going to be like a good soldier. Amen. You're going to keep on. You're going to keep on trucking. You can be like Timex. You take a licking, but you keep on ticking. Amen. You're going to keep moving for God. You're going to keep moving for God. Amen. The enemy can bring discouragement. He can bring things to try to keep you back. But you have to see it as, as from the perspective of the Lord. Amen. It's going to take you into another dimension as you stay with the Lord and stick it out and not move out of position, not move out of purpose, not move out of process, not move out of the timing of the Lord. Amen. Many people, they got the vision, they got the ministry, they got the, they got the, they got the, the prophecy. Amen. But it's the timing of the Lord. Amen. The timing of the Lord. Wait for the timing of the Lord. Put everything before the Lord. Move in the timing of the Lord. Amen. Don't let nobody bum rush you with no idea and tell you you need a decision right now. That's what con men do. The con men always make it feel like you have to buy it right now. Know the thing is the last one we got. If you don't get it now, you ain't get it now. You're going to lose. Do not let anybody push you or back you into the corner. And I don't care how good the deal looks. You must make an informed and educated decision based on the facts and based on being led by the Spirit of the living God. Because not everything that looks good is good. There's something called fool's goal. Amen. The grass always appears greener on the other side. That doesn't mean that it is really true grass. When you get to the other side, you recognize that it's only fake, all right, phony, and it's not what it is. You got to see from the eyes of Christ. You've got to take your time and be patient and let the Lord direct you. It may seem like you not moving as fast. It may seem like others getting ahead of you. It's, it may seem like they're winning, but with God, you are able to do all things through Christ who strengthens you. And God will turn your captivity. And God will give you more than you can even think of or imagine. Amen. According to the power and ability that work it in you. Let me tell you something. There is a grace and there is an amazing uh, level of anointing in you that you don't even know. You have Michael Jordan level of talent, but you don't even know it. 
there's something you are good at, you master that. You need to ask God to show it to you and bring it to fruition. Bring it to the fore. That's why they're coming after you in these dreams. That's why they're afraid of you. Because once you find out what you are capable of doing and you begin to flow in your stream, I'm not saying flow in somebody's stream. I'm not saying flow in my stream. Flow in your stream. <laughs> flow in what you're called to do. Amen? Uh, and let people be who they are. Don't try to copy the one. Copy the Lord. Copy the Holy Ghost. Amen? Follow me as I follow Christ. Amen? Imitate me as I imitate Christ. But you be you. You be your own style. Don't try to be anybody else. Because you could take on somebody's warfare by trying to copy them and don't know the price, the price, the water, the oil, the corn, the blood. They shed for that. And you track a certain class of spirits. Be you. Be the best you. Nobody can beat you being you. Amen? And that's where we have to be in this season because the enemy is trying to bring these false dreaming to promote a false sense of identity and to give us a pseudo personality. That's why people can complain about them not being themselves. That's why people have schizophrenia and bipolar and, and, and these mind battles with uh, 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 this disassociative identity disorder because they've been battling in the mind because they don't know who they really are in Christ Jesus and the enemy has been trying to give them a false narrative of who they really are but you are a one-off piece you are not a counterfeit you are a masterpiece there's never going to be another like you there's never going to be a, a handprint eye print ears feet print like yours you are singular i don't care if you're twins you are a one-off one-off creation that's a masterpiece of god but the enemy been trying to tell you all your life that you're nothing you're nobody and you're not going to mount to nothing you just like your pa, you just like your old ma, the loser, you're a loser. And it happens through people who grew you up, people who were with you, through your peers, through main kids at school, trying to beat your personality down, trying to mess you up mentally, trying to come against you through your brothers and sisters, calling you big lip, big head, you know, uh, big, you know, uh, big nose, you know, you're ugly, hideous, you know, you look like a dog, you look like a cat. And see, these things, they don't recognize, they, they dent your soul, they dent your spirit, and they begin to make you feel you know, uh, some sort of way. But the truth about the matter is, God sees you as a amazing, fantastic creation of His, worthy of dying on the cross. Worthy of dying on the cross. Worthy of coming from portals of glory. The portals of glory. Where angels would bow before Him and let His own creation and creature mock Him and beat Him. Can you imagine that? What God has let the creature beat them? I don't care what God you see, they never let their creature beat them. They never let their creature scorn them. They never let their creature uh, spit on them and crucify them. You've never seen this happen. This is truly, truly an amazing event. Heaven's best came down. Hallelujah. And lived a humble life. And he didn't curse them back. He didn't condemn them. He blessed them and told his father they don't know what they're doing. You hear me? There's never going to be another God like our God. He's worthy of all praise. He's so amazing, so wonderful. Amen? Yet many times we don't see it. We don't see it because our mind is so caught up in things. And I ask, I'm asking God that He will give you an experience with Him. That He will come into the knowledge of the Holy. That you will recognize how beautiful He is. And how much He loves us. And how much He desires for us. For us to live that life hidden in Him. Until we can be conformed to the image of His Son, Jesus Christ. And that's why these things are doing... Uh, all they can because they want they want you to conform to the image of Satan. They want you to conform to the image of the world, amen. And they want you to leave off Christ, amen. They want you to spend all your time on TikTok. They want you to spend all your time on Facebook, on on FaceTime. They want you to spend all your time on Twitter. They want you to spend all your time on YouTube. Just 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 not doing nothing, all right. Just wasting time when when it could be spent and pursued. You could get that degree. You could get that uh, get that um, that new new knowledge. You know wisdom. Uh, you know you could complete projects, but you spend time. Just doing nothing, amen? And, and it's not downtime. We spend our time uh, 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 worshiping these things instead of worshiping the Creator and spending time with the Lord, amen? And the Lord is still wise and patient as a loving Father, recognizing our frame, but knowing that these things that are happening are not working against you, they're working for you, amen? To push you into God's presence, push you into into importunity, push you when you, you've got to have a miracle, push you when these dreams are just too much, Push you when you can't take another one of these evil dreams. You can't take another one of your sibling dying. You can't take another one of your family member dying without cause for nothing. Amen. People are dropping dead for no reason. They're dropping dead right now because I told you in 2018, 19 that there's a spirit of death being released on this nation, and that when Dorian came and Dorian brought in something to this nation and then indeed the world, it brought in the spirit of death. And we saw where this thing has been 
bringing us, if you go go back and listen to my teaching on 2018 and 2019, you will understand I gave a full breakdown on what the Spirit was doing. And then I, we updated it until there was another Spirit that came that has taken over from Dorian. And this Spirit came up from the waters. This Spirit came up from the waters. It had a blue face. And the head was about, his head was at least about, the head was at least about 20 feet long. All right, so you imagine the body, and it came up out of the water. It had a fish tail. These are marine powers that are now coming on the face of the earth, and they're bringing the spirit of death. And the Lord told us that we got to prepare ourselves and put the bloodline, draw the bloodline on your property, and then put the red blood clot on your doorpost. Put it on your door. Put it on your over your over your doorpost, and that one will die. Amen. And God told us to know ourselves whenever you leave the house, before you leave the house, because most of the time they sit at your door at night time. Yes, they sit at your door. You don't even know that sometimes you step right into the thing. So God is saying, be wise. Amen. And another thing the Lord is saying, don't eat from everybody in the season. Don't eat from everybody. Because many people have gotten sick and killed and destroyed through food. Amen. Through food. So you've got to be very careful, particularly if you're spiritual. Because ain't everybody you could eat from. Ain't everybody you could eat. And many people were captured, destroyed, and they were they were they were ruined through their stomach and through eating from different places. You've got to be very careful in the season because that's why they feed you in the dream. One of the things and one of the reasons they're feeding you in the dream is because they want to feed you their narrative. They want to feed you their version of what they want you to be. They want to feed you because they know as a man, uh, 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 the weight of man's heart is true as belly. And you are what you eat. You become that thing they feed you. They can feed you darkness. They can feed you wickedness. They can feed you poverty. They can feed you lack. They can feed you sickness in your organs. Amen? Sickness in your body. They can feed you problems where you have gallstones, gallbladders, appendix bursts, you know, uh, uh, kidneys giving you problems, infection of the kidneys, urinary tract infection. They fed those things to you in a dream. They fed those things to you in a dream. And that's why you woke up with it. Now is, now is playing out in the natural. And so I adjure you and I beg you to get up at midnight and begin to pull down these strongholds. Amen? I don't care how good the chicken look. I don't, I don't care how good the rice look. I don't care how tasty the food is. It is demonic food. Most of that is human flesh. Most of that is 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 dead frogs and, and blood. Amen? And human hearts, they're feeding you. And that's why you wake up and you find that you don't even want to serve Christ no more. You find that there's a hardness in your heart towards the things of God because you were not guarding the gates of your life. Amen? And the enemy came in. And that's why we were breaking these things. That's, you see what I did? I prayed first because I wanted to break these things and I wanted to loose you, amen, in the spirit so you could worship the Lord in spirit and truth and you will know that God has done a miracle for you, amen? And I'm saying that right now to let you know that God is doing a mighty miracle for you. Those of you who are watching and listening under the sound of my voice, get ready for your mighty miracle. Get ready for your testimony. If God has done this to you and you've testified, all right, already, then know that God's about to give you another testimony. Girly, I just see what the Lord has said in the season. Get ready for him to elevate you. I see elevation elevation for you and common favor. I also hear the Lord say to tell you, be careful of someone taking something you say and twisting it. I hear the word of the Lord to you, woman of God, is to be careful of what they're trying to do. I see someone trying to twist your word and set you up. Girly Christian, I see someone trying to set you up in the spirit. And they try to twist your words. They will try to twist your words and try to say something that you didn't say, amen? So be careful how you answer people in the season. Be careful what you say. Be careful how you say it, because I see them trying to twist your word and bring you into a spirit of confusion, and where they try to even bring an investigation into what's going on or what happened to get you caught up and they, to, to cause you to lose favor and face. So be careful what you say, because I see the Lord said in this season, this is going to be the season of restoration and the season of power for you. I see power, I see power, I see power, and the Lord said even the python spirit has been trying to attack you through the back areas and through, hallelujah, through the back areas and through the shoulder areas. That spirit is being broken even as we're speaking now. The Lord has shown even in the season, the Lord said even in the season, woman of God, there's going to be elevation for you. And the Lord is even revealing to you some people that were that were in your camp that are really, that are really, uh, what I call, they are really Judas. Judases, all right? They are, they are, they are betrayers. And they are double. They're double talking. They're double speak. They're double speaking. All right. In other words, their speech is double. They're talking to you one way, and they're saying it to another. And they see them trying to create confusion. And I see the enemy trying to even bring a constricting spirit. They want to constrict the finances, constrict the blessings, trying to constrict uh, 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 things that are supposed to be easy, 
but the Lord is making a way. Amen. And I cut the serpent head off in the spirit. I loose you from the assignment. I break your power. And I lose the power of God to even flow in you right now. You want to God, I see God say it in the season. Hallelujah. He can cause you to travel. I see you traveling. God is going to cause you to travel. Mighty God. God is going to cause you to travel. And you're going to move in the spirit. Amen. You're going to fly in the spirit. Because God is going to elevate you. Hallelujah. For your patience and for your obedience. The Lord is going to elevate you. Hallelujah. God is going to elevate you. And I see you eventually making a trip to the Bahamas. You will come to the Bahamas. Amen. You will make a trip here to the Bahamas. And I see this is going to be overdue, overdue, amen? And I see you coming to the service. I see you coming to the service, one of God. And I believe that God is going to allow me to fully break this thing. Thank you, Jesus. When you do come over, because I see you connecting in a, in a season, amen? Because God will make a way for you. The Lord said, I'm doing unusual repairs in your house. The Lord said, I'm removing the spiritual insects that have been trying to come against you. I'm removing the spiritual insects that they sent. They sent certain insects. The Lord said, they are gone. But the Lord said they will not hatch, they will not bring their offspring there, and they will not congregate in your house. The Lord is gonna the Lord is gonna move them, amen. And the Lord is gonna take up a warfare for you. This is for girly Christian. Thank you. This is for girly Christian. The Lord is fighting your battle. I also see what the Lord is gonna bless SK as well. SK, the Lord said, get ready for newness of life, get ready for open heavens. The Lord said he's opening your heavens over you and your family. God says he's getting ready to bring tremendous healing for you, hallelujah, in every area of your life, including in your body. The Lord said, I'm, I'm doing a new thing for you. And the Lord said, in this season, this is going to be the take back year. You're taking back what the enemy has stolen. I see you taking back a lot of things. I see you taking back many things that the enemy has stolen from you. I see you taking back so many things. And the Lord is saying, I'm going to make things that were hard to be easy for you. The Lord said, I'm going to reveal things to you in dreams and I'm going to show you things in vision. The Lord said, even those lovers you're praying for, the Lord said, I will rebuke the spirit of confusion and I will bring them into a time of, of, of celebration and a time of encounter, says the spirit of the living God. The Lord said, the weapon will form, but it shall not prosper against you, uh, SK. And the Lord said, as you persevere uh, in him, the Lord says, I'm going to rout the plans of the wicked ones, amen, and I'm going to rout them. And the Lord says, even so, the Lord said, I'm doing a new thing for you. The Lord said, I'm doing a new thing for you. Even something concerning a relationship, says the Spirit of the living God. The Lord says, yes, yes, I'm restoring. I'm restoring what the canker worm and the papa worm have stolen for you, from you, woman of God. The Lord says, you will have more increase, more increase, more elevation. The Lord said, I'm doing this thing for you in this season, says the Spirit of the living God. You will see God just taking, taking you and just stretching you with water. I see new water, new waters. Water is a representation of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I see the water of the Holy Spirit being poured out upon you. And I see pure water, pure water, pure praise. You're going to get your praise back. Hallelujah. You're going to get your joy back, SK. I see you praising the Lord just for praising the Lord. I see you just holding prayer meetings. I see you and your family just worshiping before the Lord. I see your spirit of praise. Even the atmosphere in your house is going to be full of angels. I see angels just come on to come and hang out at your house. Woman of God, I see angels just coming to hang out at your house. Because because of the prayer, the prayers, and the atmosphere of peace, hallelujah, that the Lord is going to bring to your house. I see angels coming out and hanging out there because they want to be in the glory. They want to be where there's an atmosphere of praise. They're drawn to praise. They're drawn to prayer. They're drawn to a house of peace. And I see them hanging out there. I see them hanging out in your house. You want to attract angels? You want them to come to your house? Then you follow and do what S.K. is doing. Amen? I see them hanging out in your house. I see them hanging out for you. I see God said in the season, woman of God, hallelujah, that he's going to destroy every single spirit of stagnation. Stagnation. Even that evil altar that did raise against you and your family, mighty God. Even that generational thing that has been plaguing the family for some time, that has been fighting people in the family, hallelujah. The Lord said even that is being broken. Even that has a shelf life. Even that has a shelf life. That's been destroyed. Escaped, hallelujah. And the Lord is saying to tell you, woman of God, rejoice. Give him praise. Give him glory. Praise him at midnight. Praise him at midnight. Praise the Lord at midnight. And you enter into a warfare. Hallelujah. And do not, do not, do not mind that it gets hard and difficult. And sometimes you don't even feel like doing it. But do it anyhow. Do it anyhow. Because the Lord is going to get the glory. The Lord is going to get the glory out of this situation. Sometimes you don't even feel like praying. I'm going to lie. Sometimes you pray it out. Sometimes you burnt out. Sometimes you feel like you can't pray another second. God is going to use that to now strengthen you because in your weakness, then his strength is perfected. Amen? In your weakness, 
is his power perfected. Sometimes our weakness is the best thing we could have before the Lord so he could fill us up with his power and with his glory, woman of God. Amen? God is doing a new thing for you. Hallelujah. Uh, Prophet Balbano, the Lord said, get ready for amazing news to hear. God says, God says those evil, those evil uh, logs are coming down. Those evil blocks are coming down. Those evil walls are shattering. Those evil walls are coming down. Those evil walls are coming down. They are breaking down, and, and as I live and breathe, there, uh, there, are, there are angels that are breaking these walls down. These walls are coming down, mighty God, and, and they are going to shut up with a resounding noise, and the whole world will know that this is God and it's God's doing. God is shattering those evil walls. God is breaking those evil walls. God is removing the thing that seems impossible and bringing things into possibility for you, Prophet Samuel, and for your nation. The Lord says, though the vision tarry, yet shall it speak at the appointed time. The Lord says, keep pressing in, keep pressing in, keep pressing in. Those idols and false altar, they will be consumed by the fire of God. Even as the evil altars that the prophet of Jezebel had raised to Baal, God is going to kill them and destroy every demonic prophet that has been prognosticating and prophesying against the people of God and empowering the evil altars to do what they are doing to fight against the people and the chosen of the Lord. But the altar shall turn upon them. The prognosticators shall turn against each other in the season, says the Spirit of the living God. The Lord will cause them to be exposed. The Lord will cause them to be exposed in the season and to be seen for what they are says the Spirit of the living God. The Lord says, Rejoice, rejoice, get ready, for the Lord shall do it. The Lord shall do this thing. The Lord shall do it as you stay with the Lord, my brother. <clears throat> and as you continue to do the Lord's work, the Lord will elevate, the Lord will increase. The Lord will bring this thing in His timing, in His way, and no one can stop it, no one can slow it down, and you can't prevent it. And this is what the Lord is doing. So get ready, man of God. You stay in a state of grace, stay in a state of praising Him. Hallelujah, and the Lord will expose the hidden things that's done. Even in even in churches, even in ministries, they are worshiping other gods. Amen. In hidden places. And they are and they think that no one knows. But the Lord knows. And the Lord is going to turn them against each other. As he did the Syrian army when they came against Hezekiah. As they came against King Hezekiah, the Lord turned the enemies against each other. The Lord caused them to hear sound. Amen. They hear sound in a far home place and they begin to fight each other. Amen? And rout the enemy. And then when the king got home, his sons killed him because you boast against the Lord. Because you boast against the Lord. Amen? His own sons killed him. Amen? Ferret, fer, uh, uh, sorry, Herod had worms eaten him because he boasted against the Lord. He tried to kill the Christ child. Amen? And he was boasted about his accomplishment. And the Bible says the worms begin to eat him come out of him. Worms eat him from the inside out. You know I mean? He died a horrible death. The worms are eating him and they punched through his belly. It came out of him. Worms eating him alive because he was too boastful against the most high God. Amen? That's why we got to humble ourselves under the hands of the mighty God and let him let him exalt us in due season. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I just release a word to Seneca. Seneca, this is a time when the Lord says he's doing a mighty thing for you. The Lord says, I'm removing the troubling things that have been trying to fight you, says the Spirit of the living God. The Lord said, I blocked them, I've caged them, I've canceled all their plans, and they, all they're doing is barking dogs with no teeth. All they are is barking dogs with no teeth. All they are are barking dogs with no teeth. They have no bite. All they can do is bark all day. The Lord says, do not throw stones at everything that comes against you, because the Lord says he has you. Amen? God says, keep moving, keep moving, keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I decree and declare, this is the season and time, woman of God, where there's going to be divine elevation, divine increase, divine intimacy. The Lord says he's doing things for you, woman of God, that you cannot even imagine right now. And the Lord said he will bring things to pass. And the Lord said in his timing, he will bring the thing that he told you he will do. It shall come to pass. Amen. There shall be rejoicing in their camp. There shall be victory. There shall be peace. There shall be victory in your house. There shall be elevation. There shall be open heavens over you, says the Spirit of the living God. And the Lord said, I will give you strategies and I will give you ideas and I will give you ways and means to move that your enemy will be confused and they'll be routed and they'll not be able to figure you out. I will keep them where they are confused. I will keep them where they cannot figure you out 
and I will turn them upon each other, says the Spirit of the living God. I will turn them on each other, and they will begin to attack each other and tell each other secrets. Amen? Hallelujah. Because God says, enough is enough. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. From the days of John the Baptist, the king of God suffered violence and the violence, and the violence taken it by force. They take it by force. They're going to take it by force. Whatever you need, this is the time to connect with God. This is the time to receive it. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I got four more minutes on here, and I'm going to come off because I've been on from four. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord is releasing uncommon favor and uncommon blessings to you. And even right now, when I speak this word, I release the uncommon blessings over you uh, who are watching right now. I draw the bloodline around you and all that pertains to you. There shall be no backlash, no whiplash. There shall be no counterattack. There shall be no type of retribution and reprisal. There shall be no retaliation from the adversary. Be sealed with the blood of Jesus Christ. We post angels all around your house, all around your dwelling, all around your children, all around everything that concerns you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I just pray for uh, for Kyla. I think that's Stacy and her grandchildren. I pray for uh, Kyla in the name of Jesus. I cover them with the blood of Jesus. I cover them with the blood of Jesus. I cover you with the blood of Jesus. I release the Holy Ghost into your atmosphere right now. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for what you've done on this live. And for those that are watching, and for those that will watch in the future, God, let them see and bless this. Uh, uh, have a blessing. Uh, and not only that, let them be blessed and have a testimony of what you've done in this season concerning them coming out of captivity, coming out of dream demotion, coming out of dream warfare. Amen. Let them understand and see that God is for them. God is releasing the prison doors and setting your captives free. And God has an expected end, though it has not appeared yet. The Lord says, give him praise. Watch your confession. Speak life in your situation. Do not agree with the enemy. Agree with God. Because agreeing with the enemy is just negative faith. All right? That's just fear. And faith is the currency that moves God's hand. Amen? It is impossible to prove without faith. You have to bring faith because the whole world was formed, yes, by faith. The Lord saw it in his eyes and he spoke it and it was done. And he called out of the invisible, the visible world and the invisible world. He formed them by his faith and by his word. Amen. We have to operate in the same way. Watch your word. All right. Speak life. Those word curses that were spoken over you, we will deal with that in another session. Amen. Negative word curses. And curses that were dealt against you. Amen. So we command the spirit of confusion to go over my life as well as your life as well. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And so we cover this broadcast with the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I release uncommon favor to you. Hallelujah. God bless you. Amen.